Hello, this is Dustin Berg with ProAVSchool.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to operate a DM switcher program through Crestron. Now, there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm going to show you a more difficult way where you can pick a source and choose your destination. So, for example, here, if I want to route input 4 to output 1, you'll see it. This is what's fed to the switcher here. If I want to route 1 to output 4, then that's routed there. So I'm just going to jump in and show you how I set this up. So first thing we're going to do is look in the VTP file and see what I've got going here. Um, basically, you could ignore the switcher widget for now because that's another thing I might get a chance to show you in this video. I just don't want to overcomplicate things. Um, I've got this main window with one pop-up. That's going to be the destination. So the way it works is you choose your input selection and that will pop up this destination window which asks you to choose your output or you can press cancel so all I've done here is basically given each of these a digital press join 11, 12, 13, and 14 and these here the outputs basically it's just a serial indirect join I'll just click on this one here and show you how that's formatted and you can do this, you can, like you don't need to re remember how this formatting happens. What you can do, um, I'll just, for some reason I can't press enter here. There we go. I'll just put a sample one here. If I went analog and I wanted to do analog join number nine and make it an unsigned integer, do okay. Now you see it does percent five as the default. That'll be, I just gotta expand this so you can see it. Um, multi-line support is there. For some reason it's not showing. Sometimes the formatting ends up kind of weird with this. I'm not sure what it's trying to do. I'll try it again here. Analog go 9 unsigned integer. That looks right. So you see that's got five digits. If I wanted that to just be one, I would go a dollar sign nine um, that's filled in percent five I would change that to percent one so then that's just one digit just gonna get rid of that here because that's irrelevant because I've already got that one input parameter so what these are basically it's gonna just gonna show you each of the outputs of the switcher because the way you control a DM switcher is by feeding it the analog input that it should be for each output so that's this page. Then I have this pop-up page here, or sub-page, called Destination. It's got a join of 30, so whenever 30 is held high, this page will be shown. And then on this page are five buttons, four buttons for the source, and then Cancel. That's basically all we have on this touch panel. Switch your widget again, I'll get into later. And in the simple side, it actually works out pretty, pretty easy. I've got, I originally did this video and showed building all of it. It worked out to be about 30 minutes, which is way too long for a, a quick intro video. If you want more information or want to see this from scratch, let me know and I will put together a full one. My first one that I did, it didn't record all my mouse movements and stuff. So it was kind of a waste, waste of energy. I heard, have about 30 minutes of me talking and no video. So it's kind of useless. Anyways, so in the touch panel here, I've got my four sources that's 11 through 14 I've got my four destinations 1 through 4 and or 21 through 24 and then pop-up destination close this 30 here is holding my pop-up high so that's whenever I want to show that destination pop-up the only other parameters on this touch panel are the analog inputs of what the sources are for each output so the first thing that needs to happen is an or no matter what source you select, I run them into an OR here and have this signal called select any source. Select any source is basically doing the set for this pop-up. So I've got a set reset latch here. Uh, the output is holding that pop-up high. That's that destination feedback. You can press F3 to, show, to highlight the roots of everything that's shown on this page or F2 to see throughout the whole program where, out that sig where else that signal is being used. So that's setting that pop-up high and again that's showing basically showing this pop-up here 
whenever you press one of these four buttons. Now in order to close the pop-up, and usually when I program, I like to program the display logic and then work out what the actual control is after the fact, because I find the display layer is, is a little bit more cumbersome to get all your page flips and pop-ups and stuff. Obviously, this is a simple program, so we don't have much going on, but just to show you kind of my philosophy, and you can really approach it any way you feel comfortable. Now to cancel, all you need to do is pr press one of these destinations or press cancel. So there's all five of those there. One through five here. These are these. Again, I can press F3 and highlight just to show you where they're coming from. Basically that generates a signal select any destination and all that's doing is going to the reset of this set reset latch and when that's low then the pop-up goes away. So that's no matter what you press there it's going to make that pop-up go away. So now that we've got the pop-up opening and closing, what are we doing? Um, basically, we're initializing an analog value. So I'm doing this in an interesting way. I'm using a buffer, an analog buffer, to push the source to a destination. So first we'll talk about the source. When you press source 1 through 4, it's feeding the analog initialize here, 1, 2, 3, and 4, for the source. So that's when you're pressing here, source is 1, here source is 2, and if you press cancel, it doesn't change it, it just doesn't do anything with it. So source is sitting at uh, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And I can show you, I think I've got the debugger open here. So you can see here, source is 1. Oops, I didn't want to show that. Source is 2. Source is 3. That's this analog here. I could also show you here because it's easier. And source 4. Oops. Source 4. So you can see no matter what you do, that source always stays there. It's just not always being used. Because what I'm doing next is I'm driving that source into four different analog buffers. I'm just going to close this out. I'll open this up and I'll show you analog 1. So source for output 1. That's fed right to the switcher essentially um, if you look at the DM switch source for output 1 so that's it's called video output 1 so basically that's the number of 1 through since this, is this since this is an 8 by 8 switcher um, that's going to be could be between 1 and 8 um, in this example I'm only using 4 sources 4 inputs so it will be 1 through 4 so essentially video output 1 will either be input 1, input 2, input 3, or input 4, and that's defined by these four, which is our source that we're passing in. So the way this this works here is source is always something, right? And then once you get to that destination page, all you're doing is pressing, I'll just open it up here again here, all you're doing is pressing one of these destinations or you're pressing close. Close doesn't matter, I don't care what happens when we do close. When we press select destination 1, I am pushing the source through through this analog buffer to source for output 1. Now the interesting thing about analog values is they will stay at their last set value unless something else changes them. This is very important because the way this actually is working is select destination 1 is a pulse, it's a press whenever you press that press the button it goes high when you release the button it goes low again so what's happening here is this pulse here of the enable goes high then it goes low when it goes high it pushes the source over to source for output one when it goes low this source for output one stays at what it is unless something else changes it unless another buffer is pushing values into it which in this program is there isn't any so basically, that's how this, this logic is working. And I've got the same thing for source for output 2, source for output 3, or source for output 4. Now I'm going to show you a quick little trick here. I'm just going to delete these. Um, you can paste multiple. So I can go Control c um, click on here, Control shift v paste special, sorry, a number of copies, and 3, increment single na signal names, go OK. 
And what you want to do when you do this is check to make sure that if you've got parameters or if you've got signal names that have the number somewhere in them, it's gonna, it might potentially screw them up. So you just want to double check and make sure it did what you expected. In this case, I've done it before, so I know exactly what I'm looking for, and it's looking like it's working properly for me. So the only other thing you need to do with the DM switcher is this video enter or audio enter. Um, in this case, I'm just using it as a video switcher. This video enter needs to be pulsed whenever there's a change. So I think I did that underneath here. Yes, I did. I have a serial analog one shot for each of these four for source for output one, two, three, or four. So whenever this changes, you get this pulse, changed one or changed two or three or four. So I just ran those all into an OR. So whenever one of those outputs changes, it's going to pulse DM switch enter and this will go and it will push the switch through. So that's the simple way of doing the complicated way of switching. Now the reason I like doing it like this rather than just defaulting to the video switcher widget, I find that users don't quite understand how you're supposed to click and drag in the video switcher widget and I also like to sometimes prompt users of what they're supposed to do next. So I find this sort of philosophy works quite well for the types of programs that I do a lot is you pick a source and then it will pop up with a destination. Usually usually sorry usually it will be like monitor left or monitor right. Um, in this example I'm just using all four outputs. But this kind of prompts people of what they do next rather than having them just look at something and try to figure out how they're supposed to operate it. So that is using Crestron to program a DM switcher. Now since we've got a bit more time here I'm just going to go back and show you how you would do it with the video switcher widget if you so desired. Basically I've made another page here and I've just dragged in under widgets video switcher I've dragged that in here and the only things that I've really set up I have set the number of screens to four um, local drop mode means I don't need to feed feedback to show what's routed it will do it itself as part of the widget and you can go in and name your sources if you want in this case I'm just leaving them since I don't have an actual switcher there's not really a heck of a lot of point of me actually compiling this but what, what you would want to do is set a smart object ID because it will come out as zero. So just go auto to pick the next used one. It doesn't matter which one it is. Um, you can change the object name because that's how it's going to show up in simple. You have to compile this project. Then you go into your simple, right click on your panel, manage smart graphics extensions, which I've, which I've already done. And you'll get this video switcher. And it comes out basically like this, of source for output one, source for output two, output three, output four. So you can run those directly to your DM switcher. And then you see how it's got the changed. That's the same thing as these serial one shots essentially. So if you want, you could just name these as if they were like changed one, two, three, and four. And what I did there was just press F4 to auto increment. You can select a bunch of them press F4 and then just run those into your OR which gives you the signal for video switch enter. So that's just going through Simple and Vision Tools Pro E to program a DM switcher in Crestron. If you want more tricks and tips and AV information please go to proavschool.com and we're doing a series of Crestron webinars. You can find the link to that on the site and sign up for the mailing list specific to the webinars and we'll have lots of good information. Now I've also included the source code for this demonstration underneath the video. You can download it and play around with it yourself. Thank you. I'm Dustin with ProAVSchool.com. We'll talk to you later.